welcome. This is one of my most requested tutorials. It's a basic chunky knit vest. This is a really great first project if maybe all you've done so far is knitting scarves. If you're confident with knit stitches and purl stitches, this is a great introduction to your first shaped garment. I really hope you're gonna love it. Uh, let's get going. I'm using this, which is Urban from Yarn and Colours. I got it from Lovecrafts, but it's actually quite difficult to find, I think. It's been discontinued, but it's very similar to the wool from We Are Knitters or Crazy Sexy Wool from Wool and the Gang. And you can use either of those. You can use any type of yarn that you like, as long as it works on size 15mm needles, because that's the size of needle that we're going to be working on for this pattern. If you're in the US, that's 19. I'm going to be making a size medium and it gives a nice oversized fit for a size 10 to 12 vest top once it's finished and it's 60 centimeters across the front here. You can have a look in the description for some examples to help give you a, an estimate on what size and how many stitches you might need. But I'm also going to show you how to measure in case you want to do this with a test square or if you're using different size needles you can also follow this method. So to knit a test square you need to knit up either 15 to 20 stitches and do enough rows so that you will be able to measure. Then you'll need to get a tape measure and we want to see how many stitches fit inside 10 centimeters. So put your tape measure right on the end and measure 10 centimeters and you want to count and see how many stitches fit inside of those 10 centimeters. This doesn't have to be exact but I have around six stitches here which means my stitch is around 1.7 centimeters. To work this out, divide your 10 centimeters by the number of stitches that you have inside those 10 centimeters. I'm starting with 34 stitches and 34 times 1.7 centimeters gives me 60 centimeters or close enough. You can use this method to calculate how many stitches you want at the beginning by just using the tape measure to figure out how wide you want it to be at the end and work backwards. You can also use this method for smaller needle sides to figure out how many stitches you need to use at the beginning and then follow the other steps as we move forward. Okay, so let's get cracking. I'm gonna start with the long tail cast on method. If you haven't done this before, this makes a really nice stretchy cast on. This is gonna go around the bottom of the jumper. Now, you don't have to do this step if perhaps you're a beginner and you want to make things a little bit easier. You can just simply do a normal cast on will work absolutely fine. So feel free to skip ahead. I'm gonna put a timestamp on the screen now so you know where to join me. But if you want to use the long tail method, you need to go ahead and leave yourself a nice long tail, as the name suggests, you don't want to run out, so put lots of yarn to one side, and then we're going to create a slip knot. You're going to pop the slip knot onto your needle, and I like to leave the tail of the yarn towards the bottom half of the screen, or like on your left, and the yarn that is attached to the ball on the right. Then you need to grab the yarn like this, so I like to insert my pointy finger and thumb in between each of the sections of yarn and grab hold with my other fingers, so you will create this kind of M shape, like a capital M for McDonald's. From here we're going to take the needle over to the very far left and hook it behind that section of yarn that's hooked over our thumb on the very far left hand side like this and then come back into the middle and then we're going to go underneath and around to the section on the very far right hand side and pull up a loop with that section. Then you need to pull both strands of yarn to tighten the loop and you'll see we've cast on one stitch onto the needle. I will show you again so poke your fingers through to make an M shape then around the very far left and through to the very far right and pull through your loop from there. There are other methods of doing this long tail cast on so if you have another way that works better for you feel free to go ahead and do that. As I said normal cast on will work just fine as well. I'll go through it again just in case anybody is still trying to get the hang of it. 
So slip your fingers through the middle and wrap your other fingers around. And so from the very furthest on the left behind that section of yarn, then go underneath and behind again from the very far right this time to the yarn on the right hand side. And you should have a loop like this. You'll notice when you come to tightening up the loop, if you pull one of the strands, it will tighten the loop going over the needle and the other strand will tighten up the loop that's going around the base. So you will need to pull on both of them gently to get the right tightness. So I'm going to cast on 34 stitches. As I said, this is quite a nice slouchy, oversized, medium fit and I will meet you at the end. Okay, so I've just finished casting on and counted all of my stitches. I've also got a little bit of the long tail left, which I'm just going to tie in a knot to keep it out of the way. Sometimes I like to use this to sew up the side seams once I'm done, but you can just trim it if you think it might annoy you. And then we're going to start in one by one rib stitch. So to knit in rib, we are going to alternate between normal knit stitches and purl stitches. So go ahead and knit the very first stitch as normal. Then you're going to pass the yarn to the front and come in from behind and purl the second stitch purl wise. Then pass the yarn over to the back and knit the next stitch. So we're just going to carry on alternating one purl stitch as you can see here with the uh, working yarn at the front. Then pass the yarn over to the back and knit the next stitch. And we're going to carry on in this way until we get to the end of the row and that's row one of rib stitch. If you find yourself getting lost, as happens to me often when someone says something to me and you can't remember which stitch you've done last, have a look at the bottom of the stitch where it's next to the needle. You can see the first one on my right hand needle it's got this little lump underneath and that tells you that you have just purled that stitch. The next one along hasn't got a lump and that means that we have knitted that stitch. Okay, so I'm now at the end of my first row of rib, as you can see here. Once you've reached the end of the row, we are going to do the second row exactly the same, but you just need to make sure that when you turn the work around, you're going to be knitting in the right place. So you can see here, this stitch on the very end doesn't have a little bar at the top of it, and instead it looks like a V shape. So that means that I need to knit that stitch the next one along has got the little horizontal bar, so that one is the one that I need to purl. If you start with an even number of stitches at the beginning, then you will always be starting with the same thing. So if you start on a knit, you should always be starting with a knit. If you started on a purl, you'll always be starting with a purl. If you've got an odd number of stitches to start with, then it will alternate every row. So just carry on working across the second row of the rib stitch, knitting on all the knit stitches, purling on all of the purl stitches until you get to the end. I'm just reaching the end now, so this is my second row of rib. We're then going to go ahead and turn the work round and do one more row to finish it off. So turn it over and go ahead and knit your third and final row of rib. You can make this longer if you prefer, but I think that this gives a nice amount of rib around the bottom. So we're going to do the third and final row and I will meet you back there. This is what it will look like when you've done three rows of rib and you can count down from where the needle is and see three stitches in a row. And now from here, we're going to start working in basic stocking net stitch. We're now going to work from the top of where the rib has just finished all the way up 
until the underarm point. And in between those two points, we've actually got 16 rows of stockinette stitch. If you're sizing up, you might want to add a couple of rows on there. Alternatively, if you want to make it a bit more cropped, you can take away a couple of rows. Um, because these stitches are quite big, you only really need to change it by one or two rows here or there, give or take. Um, so we're going to go ahead and knit 16 rows of basic stocking stitch. This part is very easy, so you're just going to go ahead and knit all of these stitches. This is, We'll call this row 1 because it's the first row of stocking stitch. And so row 1 is going to be knit every single stitch. Then when we get to the end, we're going to turn around and purl all of the stitches, which is row 2. So all of the odd rows we're going to be knitting and all of the even rows we're going to be purling. I am just at the end now, I'm knitting my very last stitch of the first row. So we're going to turn around and purl all of these stitches. You can see they've all got a little lump on the back, so they all need to be purled. And that's going to be row two. From here, I want you to carry on just purling all of the purl rows, knitting all of the knit rows until you have done a total of 16 rows. Maybe put the telly on, watch something you like. I'm going to meet you at the end of row number 16. Okay, I'm just finishing up my final row number 16. We know that's right because it's an even number. Um, and then the next row, row number 17, we're going to start a decrease to make the armhole at the underarm point. Okay, I'm just going to quickly count up from the bottom to make sure that I've got the correct number of rows and that we're all good. From here, we're going to create the shape of the armhole. So we want this section to come in slightly. This is actually pretty easy. So if you've made it this far, well done. We're in good stead. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video. And let's make the armhole. So we're basically going to cast off these three stitches. Very straightforward. Go ahead and knit the first one, knit the second one, and then pass the first one on your right hand needle over and off the end. So that's one stitch cast off. We're going to knit another one and cast off stitch number two. And then one final time, knit one more and cast off stitch number three. Then carry on and knit all the way until the end to finish off this row, which is row number 17. Okay, I'm just reaching the end of that row. I'm going to just flip the work over and do exactly the same thing to make the other armhole on the other side, but this time we're going to be doing it purlwise. So we're going to purl the first stitch just exactly the same as we did on the opposite side. Purl number one, purl number two, and then slip that first one off. So we've casted off stitch one, cast off a second one, and then purl another one and we're just going to cast off the third and final stitch on that side to make the armhole. Now just carry on and purl all the way to the end and this is row number 18. This is what it will look like once you've just done those two rows of casting off. So you've got three little stitches making a little step on each of the corners. So this is going to be row number 19. Super easy. Just go ahead and knit all the way across. Absolutely as normal. And then 
we're going to work some decreases but in this pattern the decreases all happen on the purl rows um, so this row just knit as normal and I will see you at the end So I'm just at the end of that knit row number 19 and we're going to turn over. This is row number 20 and this is where we're going to start putting in some decreases and this is to continue on that nice shape around the armhole. We want it to carry on coming in in like a nice smooth line. Uh, if you've watched my previous tutorial, it's, this is going to be the same method of a, a left leaning decrease and a right leaning decrease. Now that's a way of making it look really neat from the front. I'm just going to show you on this panel here that I've already got. You can see here, this is the leaning decrease and that's how it looks. You get a really smart edge. There are lots of other methods of decreasing, but this is the only way that I've found where this row just carries on all the way around and it's exactly the same on both sides. That's the most important thing because some other decreases don't match on the left and the right and it can look a bit messy. So if you want to do a different method, by all means go ahead, but if you'd like to copy me, uh, then we're going to do leaning decreases here. So, okay, so it's a purl row. We're going to just purl two stitches as a border. We can do one on this occasion, I've chosen to do two. So we're always going to have two stitches at the edge. So we've done two purl stitches and now we have got two stitches which we're going to purl together. So you can simply slip your needle in between both of the stitches and purl them together. Now this works when we're working on what would be the left hand side of the item if we're looking at it from the front. We're looking at the back now, so it's the right, whichever way you prefer to think of it. It only works on this side. When we're on the other side, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So purl those two together and then carry on working in purl across the row until you reach the other end. Once you reach the other side, we're going to pause when we've got four stitches left because that's where we're going to put the other decrease. So I've got four stitches left on my needle. These two are the border, which is the same as the other side. These two we're going to purl together, but we're not going to do the same as the other side. So this wouldn't work if we just purled these two together. It will decrease the stitches, but it doesn't look the same on the front as the other side. So in order to make it look the same, we need to kind of work a little bit backwards. Um, this is the slip slip purl method, where you can insert your needle and slip the stitch, then slip the second stitch, and then put them back onto the left hand needle. What you've done here is basically just turn the stitch around, so now the back loop is actually on the right hand side, instead of it facing this way, we've literally just taken it off and turned it over so that it faces that way. You can do this by hand if you prefer rather than slipping, but you basically just need to turn the little loops around so that they're facing the other way. And now we can go ahead and purl them together, but we're gonna purl them through the back loops. So I'll show you what I mean. This is how you would normally purl two together, but to purl through the back loops, you wanna come in from the very behind on the opposite side of the work through here and purl two stitches together from the back. That can feel a bit awkward but you will get the hang of it. And then purl the last two remaining border stitches and that is how we're going to do our decrease row from here on. Well done if you're still with me. You can see on the front here that we've got decreases starting to happen. So we've just done our first little decrease here. You can see how that stitch has just eaten the one that's next to it. And it will be the same on the other side. So you've got the stitch, the two border stitches and they just lean into the left and consume the row next to it and it looks really lovely. We're now just gonna go ahead and knit this row exactly as normal, no decreases on this row. We're only gonna do them on the pearl rows. All 
I'm just going to show you here what I like to do when my ball of yarn runs out. There are a lot of methods for attaching a new ball of yarn. You, if you're using wool, you can even mesh the tails together so that you have a completely seamless join. I am quite lazy when it comes to tying on a new ball of yarn and I'm just going to show you what I like to do. So I just take the new one and attach it at the back on the wrong side and I just tie it in a simple knot on the behind try and get it as close as you can to the bottom but I don't tie it too tightly and that's because when I'm finished sometimes I will come back to this knot undo it and then once all of the tension has been finished I can tie the knot again so that it sits as seamlessly as possible so I would suggest not doing those knots super tight just in case you need to move them or readjust them slightly but yeah that's basically how I add on another ball So this is our next purl row of decreases and we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did on the previous side and we're going to do a total of three of these decrease rows so this is the second one we'll do one more after this um, so just to recap we're going to knit uh, sorry we're going to purl the two stitches on the very edge then we're going to purl the next two stitches together and we can do these ones uh, the easy way so just put your needle through and just purl two together and then carry on purling until you get to the end when you've got four stitches left that's when we're going to do the decrease on the other side okay so I've got four stitches left we're going to be doing the next decrease and this is the slip slip purl method so insert your needle and slip the first stitch and the second stitch knitwise and then put them back, transfer them again onto the left hand needle and you've basically turned the stitch around. If you want to do it by hand, it will look like this. So just slide them off and then rotate them 180 degrees. So instead of putting it on the way that it was, you want to turn it over so the other loop is on the front this time. And now we're ready to purl and this time we're purling through the back loops. So coming from behind, Put your needle through both of the back loops together and purl two stitches together. Hope that makes sense. And now purl the last two stitches. Okay, once you've done that row, you're going to go from here and do the same thing that we've just done one last time. So to create one last leaning decrease on each side. So what you're going to do from here is one more knit row so knit from here all the way across and then one more purl row purl all the way back again and do your leaning decrease exactly the same so purl two together and then slip slip purl and I will meet you there this is what it's going to look like after you've done your third and final set of decreases from here we're going back again to basic stocking stitch and we need to just go from the top and do a further 10 rows so we're going to just carry on going completely straight up knit on the knit rows and purl on the purl rows so from this underarm point all the way up until we get to where we need to make the neckline we need to do 10 rows again if you want to make this slightly more cropped you can take a row or two out of this because it is quite an oversized pattern um, so you might want to do eight but on this particular design I'm doing 10 and I will meet you at the end after you've done those rows so this is what it looks like once I've added on those rows um, if you get lost you can go from your underarm point and just count up we did six rows of the decrease section here so we did three decreases and each one is two rows and then we did ten rows on top so you can count from here all the way up and you should get 16 until you reach your needle Now we're going to go ahead and do the shaping for the neck hole. I'm going to do this by knitting seven stitches on each side to form the shoulder and I'm going to cast off some of the stitches in the middle to create the neck hole. So I'm going to keep seven stitches for the shoulder section. So I'm just knitting seven. This is the seventh stitch going onto my right hand needle now. 
and I'm just going to count seven stitches on the left, two, four, six, seven. So that leaves me these stitches, two, four, six, eight, in the middle, and I'm going to cast off those stitches. So to cast these off, I'm going to ignore the seven stitches that I've just done. We're going to knit this one first, then we're going to knit the second one, and we're going to slip the first one off the edge to start forming the neck hole. Then carry on casting off these stitches until you have eliminated all eight of the neck hole stitches. If you sized up and you've got more stitches than this, then you will have more stitches in your shoulders and your neck hole. So for example, if you've got one extra stitch, then put this extra one in the neck hole section. If you've got two extra stitches, put them in the shoulder sections. If you've got three extra stitches, then you can put one in each section. Um, one stitch either way isn't going to make a huge amount of difference. We just want to make sure, most importantly, that the left and the right shoulders have the same number of stitches as each other. So I'm just finishing my cast off. I've got two, four, six on the left hand needle and this one is going to stay on the right hand needle to make the seventh stitch. So we're going to just go ahead and knit these six. So what we're going to be left with is seven on the left hand side of the needle and then you've got a big gap in the middle where you've cast off those stitches. So this is what it will look like. One day I will glue the end on because that happens to me every time. This is what it will look like. I've got seven stitches on each shoulder and a big space in the middle which consists of the eight stitches that I cast off. Yours might be slightly bigger if you've gone for a different size but as long as your shoulders are the same as one another then we're all good. So now to carry on creating the shape for the neck hole we actually want to put some more decreases for this shoulder to come in this way and the other shoulder we want to go that way. So this is the opposite way around to the decreases that we did before. So to do this we're going to start by purling until we've got four stitches left on the end here. We're not decreasing on this outermost corner, that one stays at it as it is, we're just decreasing on the inside next to where the neck hole is because we want to bring it in. So these two we need to do the slip slip purl, so we're going to turn those stitches round and purl through the back of the loops and that's because we want this decrease to come towards the right hand side from the back of the garment. Then do the last two purl stitches and now we're going to leave these, ignore them for now, forget about them, we're just leaving them on the needle but we're going to stay working on just one shoulder at a time. So turn it round and now we're going to knit this row as normal. After you've finished that knit row, we're going to do one final row of decrease to finish off this shoulder. So exactly the same as we just did. Just purl these stitches until you've got four left. There's actually only two that you need to purl and then you've got four left. And then I'm going to decrease. So slip, slip and put them back. And then purl two together through the back loops. And then purl your two final stitches. Then flip it round and we are at the end. So I'm playing yarn chicken with this. I can't believe I've got this much left. Um, can I finish the last row? Remains to be seen. So this is the cast off row. So we're just going to go ahead and knit and cast these stitches off by slipping them over the end until you get to the end. I can't actually believe that that's where my ball of yarn has finished, like would you look at that? So anyway, I've just finished casting off the stitches and you can cut your yarn and pull the tail through and you have now finished one of the shoulders.
Okay, we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So grab your yarn and flip the work over. You can tie the yarn on to the end loop if you like. I quite often just leave it and start knitting with it. And then I come to sew it in when I sew all of my ends in at the very end. So we're just going to purl across and we're going to do two of the edge stitches. And now we're going to decrease. So we're going to do purl two together. This way is the easy way. So you can just literally purl two together very straightforward and then purl the last three. Now you're going to do one row of just knit all the way across. Be careful with this end if you haven't tied it on like me, just make sure to pull it so it's not going to become too loose and fall out. Now we're going to do our last and final decrease. Woohoo! We're going to purl these two stitches as before just to keep the border. Then we're going to purl the next two together the easy way. And then once you've done that, just go ahead and purl the last two stitches as normal. Then flip the work over and we're going to cast off the final shoulder seam. So knit one onto the right hand needle, knit the second one, slip the first one over the top and carry on until you've cast off all of those stitches at the top of the shoulder. Then once you're done, cut the yarn, take the last loop off the needle, poke the tail through the hole and pull it to tighten it and you've finished your front panel. If you've never knit a neck hole before, then celebrate because you just learned how to knit one and the armholes. So now we just need to make a back panel and we're going to do that the same way that we made the front panel. So you're going to start off cast on the same number of stitches, do the same number of rows of rib, you're going to knit up to the armhole point. I've put all of these notes in the description if you've done the same number of stitches as I have. You're going to do your decrease. The only difference is we're not going to do the neck hole on the back. You're just going to keep on going. So that's an extra four rows that we did for the shoulders that you're just going to do basic stocking stitch all the way up to the top. So here's my back panel. As you can see, the top is just completely straight, doesn't need any shaping um, and it's nice and easy for you. For my back panel here, I actually only decreased twice on each side instead of three times that we did on the front here. It doesn't need to have quite as much shaping on the back. So you can just do two decreases and then carry on knitting the straight stocking stitch until you get to the very top. So that makes it even easier. Now, before we start knitting the neck, this is going to have a nice turtle neck, we need to just join one of the shoulder seams together. So I'm going to show you how I like to join my shoulder seams. So you can pick whichever one I'd recommend, maybe doing the same one as me, just so that you can follow along a bit easier. So grab your yarn and you're going to need a darning needle like this. I'm going to show you how I find most easy to thread the needle because often this fat yarn doesn't like to fit. So I like to wrap it around the needle and stretch it tight and pull on the loop around the outside of the needle and then flatten it with my finger and thumb 
and try and force that flattened folded over edge through the eye of the needle or maybe you've got one with a bigger eye you might not struggle as much as I did here. So to start our shoulder seam you want to put them with the right sides facing up flat on the table with the shoulder seam touching. Then I've got a tail here where we cast off the shoulder seam and so I'm just going to tie the new yarn onto that tail. If your tail's long enough then by all means you can use that. Um, and then we're going to take the yarn and we're going to sew the shoulder seams together. So here we need to look for where the stitches are creating this little V shape. So you can look for the little V where the stitches are leaning towards one another rather than away from one another. And so you can pass your needle behind here at the pointy end of the V behind the two stitches and that's where you want to thread your needle and pull the yarn behind there. Now we're going to go down to the other side and do the same thing. So you want to grab the V section where the little bars are pointing towards each other and grab that pointy end and pull your yarn behind those two stitches. You don't want to pull this too tightly because we're going to let the yarn lay across the top of the join and it almost mimics a stitch to make that seam look seamless. You will see what I mean. So just carry on working behind the little V shapes, passing your yarn and you will be able to join your shoulder seam together. So I'm just at the end now, I'm going to do one more stitch on this side, that's the last little V-shaped stitch on the front panel. And then I'm just going to put one more to finish it off at the back. Once you get to the end, I'm going to just pass this yarn back through to the very edge of the front panel and pull it through to the inside and then I'm just going to leave it there. We'll come to sewing in all of our loose ends at the end, so for now just cut that off and we're ready to do the neck. So to do the neckline we need to count how many stitches we've got at the end on the other shoulder and we just want to leave enough of those stitches to match on the back because the back is straight we don't know where the shoulder seam starts. If you've got a stitch marker to hand I'd suggest you count up until this point so that you've got the same number of stitches for the other shoulder seam and put a stitch marker in there. I haven't got one to hand so I'm just going to have to pay attention when I get to the end but if you do have one I would suggest you put one in there. Now flip the work round so you're on the very far right hand side, you've got the right shoulder seam and the front is facing up and we're going to take our yarn and our one of our needles and you just want to find the first edge of the neckline and just poke your needle behind there. So you should have two bars um, because one stitch consists of two little bars so you want to grab that stitch and then we're going to start casting on around this edge. 
So you can tie your yarn onto the tail at the end here. And now to cast on, make sure you're not using those little short tails, but use the one that's connected to your yarn. Pass it round the needle and pull through to the front side and pull through a loop. Then move along to the next stitch, put the needle through the stitch and pull through a loop. And we're just going to move along poking through every single stitch as we go. Make sure you've got two bars of each one and pull through a loop. Here you see we've got that next stitch, pass it through and pick up and you, you'll go all the way around the front of the neckline until you reach the opposite shoulder and that could be where you've put your stitch marker to let you know that you've reached the end. Okay, so I've just picked up all of my cast on stitches all the way until I've reached the end and I'm stopping here before I get to the edge because I need to leave enough stitches on the end here to sew into the other shoulder seam. So if you haven't got a stitch marker, remember to stop and leave those stitches there and you need to count them to make sure that you've got enough the same so that you can show, sew those shoulders together. Now we're just back to working in basic one by one rib to create the neckline. So you want to grab your other needle and we're going to just work across all of these stitches that we picked up in knit one purl one um, until you reach the other side. I'm now just reaching the end of that first row of rib. From here you can go ahead and add as many rows as you like. I've done a total of four rows of rib and that creates a neckline that looks like this. You can create more if you want to make a bigger turtleneck. If you keep on going and do sort of 15 to 20 rows, you can create a roll neck that will fold all the way back on itself. But for now, I've just done four rows and now I'm going to cast off. Once you've cast off, this is how it's going to look. So you've got your rib neck all the way around. You've got one shoulder seam joined and we need to join the other shoulder seam and the edge of the rib will join at the neck together. So I've got a nice long tail on the end of this rib section where I cast off. I just left a really long piece at the end. So I'm just gonna use that um, with my darning needle to sew the rib neck together and down and along the top of the shoulder seam as well. So thread your yarn the same way as we did before. Now first thing that I'm going to do is find this very edge corner of the rib and just go through to pull the sections together. Now what we're going to do here to sew the rib together is look for these horizontal bars that you can see in between the rows of the rib. We want to pick up one of these horizontal bars like this, but that's not actually the very edge. I'm just showing you these ones, it's a bit easier to see. The very edge ones are all the way over here. So that's what we're looking for. We're going to pick up the little bar there and just go behind it and then do the same on the other side. So the little bars that I have on the other side are here. So I'm going to pick up the first one and now move back over and pick up the next one down. And this makes a really nice seam.
Once you reach the bottom of the rib, you'll get to the shoulder seam, and this is where we need to go back to doing the other type of stitch that we did on the other shoulder seam. So we're now gonna go back to picking up the little pointy end like this, where the V-shape makes a point at the very edge. So we're gonna go behind those two stitches here, then pass the yarn back up to the top and grab the little V-shape on that side and pull those two edges together exactly the same way as we did on the opposite shoulder. I'm just grabbing that very last little stitch here and then I've got a tail here that I'm going to tie those ends together. Once you flip it round, this is what it will look like. Both of our shoulders are attached and our neckline is complete. Now all that's left for us to do is sew up these side seams and hide all of the ends and we will be done. So we're on the home stretch now. I'm just tying some yarn on at the bottom here and we're going to go and sew the side seam up. This is going to be the same way that we sewed the rib along the neck. So I'm going to just grab this very bottom corner point and go behind there to bring the ends together nicely. Now you want to look for the little horizontal bar in between the rows of rib and pick that up. We're going up here. And then back across to the other side and I'm going to grab this little horizontal bar here, the very bottom one, and pick that one up. Now I've reached the edge of the rib section and I'm just going to carry on sewing exactly the same way, picking up the little bar that's in between the stitches. This is stocking stitch rather than rib but they still have the same little bar in between each of the stitches so keep looking for that, keep working up in exactly the same spot that you were before and you should get a really nice seamless join. Okay, I've just reached the very top. I've picked up the last of the little horizontal bars that I have. And now, in order to fix the very top together, I'm gonna go through here, which is the first of the cast off stitches that we made. And then just go around and come through to the other one on the opposite side and just go round to secure those together. I'm gonna go around a second time. I'm now just going to poke the yarn through to the inside and I'm going to show you how to hide the loose tails that we're going to have left at the end. So turn the work inside out because we want to hide all of these on the inside. So 
So this is the top of the seam that we've just finished. And if you like, you can hide this tail inside the seam. It makes quite a nice hiding place. So to do that, I just come through from the top to the bottom. Try and make sure that you're not poking through all the way to the front because we don't want that to be visible. We just want to hide the end so that we can safely cut it off and it's not going to come out. Now for some of these knots where you've tied on a spare ball, this is what I mentioned before about not tying them too tightly because I like to go in and undo those knots and then re-tie them again. So hopefully you've left them loose enough so that you can wiggle them apart without disrupting your stitches. And then just stretch the knit nice and flat and make sure that you've not got the yarn pulled too tight but you've also not got it too loose and just make the knot in the perfect size so that it's as flat and as small as possible. And then you can tie that in another knot and now you can pull it a bit tighter because that's not going anywhere. And I'm gonna show you how to hide these. So we want to poke through and hide the tail in the back of some of these stitches, but we don't want it to be visible from the front. So just put your needle through and poke through the back loops like this and then you want to pull through gently so that you don't distort your knitting too much and that should hide your tail and then you can go back again and go back in the opposite direction Now stretch it out to make sure that it's laying nice and flat and then you can go in and cut the end off. Be careful not to snip any of your stitches and that's completely hidden. So we'll go through and do the other side as well. Get rid of all your loose ends and this is what it's going to look like once you have joined that side seam. So the only thing left once you've done the opposite side seam and sewn in all of your ends is to go ahead and give this a really nice steam. It's the best part of any project when you get to steam it it makes the knit relax takes any tension out of the yarn that's been put in through the knitting process and you'll be able to get these edges to lay nice and flat you can see how it's rolling in a bit now we'll steam it out and that's gonna make it look ten times better you can use a normal iron if you don't have a steamer just fill it up with water and hit the steam button you want to be careful not to squash your knitting. You want to hold the weight of the iron in your hand because you don't actually want to iron it. So just blast lots of steam through it and kind of hover the iron across the surface without putting any weight down on it. And you'll be able to get the seams to sit nice and flat. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope you're pleased with your finished result. Well done. And it's going to keep you all nice and cozy through the winter. Send me a message over on Instagram. I'm at IA Knitwear. I would love to see your finished pieces.